Welcome to today, today's uh, webinar. Thank you for joining the session, how to apply the online shopping model to interlibrary loans. My name is Megan Weldon, Rapido Product Manager at Ex Libris, and my role today is at the webinar host. As your host, I would like to give you an overview of what to expect today. We are starting with this introduction. We'll have a poll question to hear from all of you. And then Judith will have us spend some time considering what if users could borrow a title like they order a pizza. We'll follow that with a poll question and then spend most of our time today hearing Peggy's story from Florida Gulf Coast University. We'll address questions at the end of the session. We have great engaging presenters today, and then we also have a few ways for you for you to engage as well. Please ask your questions by using the chat feature at any time. Please answer the polls as they pop up for you in the chat. And lastly, but not least, please engage with registering for the demo. You'll see an option to register for a demo and I encourage you to do so as it'll be a means to learn more, continue to ask and answer questions and engage further with today's topic. Now I'd like to turn it over to our speakers for today. I invite Peggy, the Department Head of Customer Service at Florida Gulf Coast University, and Judith, the Director of Product Management at Ex Libris, part of Clarivate, um, to share their stories with us today. Thank you, Megan. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here with all of you here today. Uh, so I just want you to start with imagining. Uh, so a little bit of imagination. What if you could uh, require a resource or ask for a resource as you order a pizza? Wouldn't that be wonderful, right? Uh, so I want to start with a question, actually. And my question to you guys is how many clicks what does it take you to order a pizza? I don't want you to go crazy with the toppings. So, okay, so it's not like a multiple toppings pizza, something in the middle. And you can put those on the chat just uh, to make it a little bit fun. Um, how many clicks does it take to order a simple pizza? You can put this and I'll give you a sec. Eight, okay, nice. I'm seeing some uh, numbers. Wow, those are large numbers. Again, not crazy with the topics. OK, so I want to tell you that uh, <laughs> a coupon. OK, a coupon for OK for work. Uh, so I want to tell you that the average uh, really it's uh, between four and five. Again, I'm talking about average and not a crazy pizza. And let's start thinking about comparing that to the resource sharing experience of our users. OK, so I want you to keep that in mind. What does it what does it take your users to um, perform a resource sharing request compared to a pizza uh, ordering through an application. OK, I want to take you back in time also with this little uh, rewind uh, visual, uh, and I want to take you back to, to, to 2019. This is even before COVID started. Um, we started to have conversations with uh, libraries and libraries were sharing their experience uh, with us regarding resource sharing. And there were a lot of concerns. And I want to share with you some of the concerns um, that were raised and uh, what actually happened uh, because of these concerns. So the most basic concern that we were hearing is that the experience by the users using resource sharing services offered by libraries were, was, was simply a terrible experience. OK, and let's let's go through 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 that experience uh, that users were experiencing. Researchers and students. So first of all, they had to navigate. They have to nav navigate uh, through different systems in order to perform this request. So you usually start from your library and from your library. Then what happens if you don't find the material? And I want to remind you of our pizza example. Imagine you had to go to another application just for the toppings. So that's exactly what's happening in resource sharing. You have to go out because of the toppings. Um, so navigating out uh, from your system. What you're seeing here on the right uh, side of my screen is a regular resource sharing form. So again, uh, we're placing 
a form in front of users, many fields to fill. The user doesn't really know how many fields they need to use. Um, they have to type in. And of course, there's no info and availability on the on anything about this request. So it's like praying magic. I'm going to fill in this very long form outside of my system and I'm going to maybe I'll get the material on time for my uh, paper. Maybe not. It's like a guessing game. Again, if we go back to the pizza example, you know exactly when this is going to be delivered, uh, how long it's going to take, and you can even sue them if it doesn't come to you on time. Now, <laughs> we don't want to sue anyone, but uh, OK, a lot of visibility with the pizza, not with resource sharing. OK, now if we think about the staff and having this form being copied outside of the system they're working in, their main ILS, for example, then you have to imagine all of the work that our staff is doing. So it's not only our users are having a very hard time, we are seeing the staff copying and pasting, revising the metadata. It's really a very, very, very strenuous a process. So we started with those discussions in 2019, and uh, amazingly, Rapido was born. Today we're going to hear about uh, Rapido from Peggy's uh, perspective. Uh, so it's really exciting, but what is Rapido? So it's a very new resource sharing solution. And the beauty of it is that it really integrates uh, with your library system. Um, it's uh, fully integrated with uh, Alma. Uh, we're integrating with Sierra and other systems. And um, it is actually one experience for users and one experience for staff. So from the imagination to make it in concrete, uh, uh, we can now order resources as we order a pizza. And I want to tell you a very short story because I want to give Peggy the time. Uh, is that uh, we had uh, we've had some institutions that even launched this service without explaining to their users uh, that something new was coming up. It's called a soft launch, and users just knew what to do. And the whole idea is that you start from your discovery system, you look for what you want, and if you don't find it, you don't have to go outside of the system. So it's one interface for users. And you just find those resources that your library doesn't hold, and, doesn't hold, and then you get some uh, options. Of course, this service is up at all times, and not only is up at all times, but I want you to imagine the load balancing that is happening here, so if someone for example, once a digital copy in the United States uh, in um, at night, uh, the system will know to refer it to a custom uh, an institution in another place where the libraries are working at that time of the of the day. And of course, a lot of uh, options and visibility to our users. So you can see here what you're seeing in my screen is two options we found for you in your discovery this particular resource that we don't have. There are two options here. Uh, you can select the option that suits you more. And I even want to say that even, even this visibility might mean that the user won't place the request because the item won't come in time. And that's even a good thing uh, for libraries because we, don't, we won't have this resource back and forth that no one's going to use because it comes late and we didn't really know. For the staff, it's the same thing. So same experience. Everything's managed from one side. What you're seeing here is the Rapido uh, from the staff perspective. Peggy will show a lot of this. Everything's managed in one place. Um, everything's pre-populated. Uh, most of the time, there is no need for any type of intervention from the boring uh, staff. Everything flows. The system finds the right lender, and uh, there we go. OK, so a bit of numbers uh, just to understand. Rapido is all about the community, and I want to give you a, a short view of what happened in, in 2023. So fast forward in time, uh, we had uh, with all of our communities a network so we can communicate with other systems. Of course, we have we had 2.6 million of, re of fulfilled requests, boring requests with a fulfillment rate of physical of 87 and a digital request uh, fulfillment rate of 92 percent. And the wonderful thing is that 96 percent were fulfilled by the first lender, meaning that the system is automatically finding um, the right lender. 
without need of, for your intervention. Lastly, and then I'm passing this back to uh, Megan and Peggy, is this wonderful map. The community is growing all around the world. Just wanted to give you two numbers. We have currently 109, 119 live Rapido libraries doing a lot of resource sharing. Most impressively, this is a growing collective collection. And Peggy, Megan, this is all yours. Thank you. OK, uh, thank you, Judith, for providing an introduction to Rapido. I'd like to ask our colleagues to think about and answer this question. Does your resource sharing requesting experience look like what your users are expecting? Does it look and interact in a way that aligns with their expectations of placing orders? Your options are yes, no, and not applicable as this perspective may be outside of your scope of work. So you should be able to answer that poll and see the answers in the chat. Okay. All right, let's go on to our next slide here, Peggy. And thank you for everybody for answering the poll questions. I now have a question to ask of our colleague, Peggy. Um, Peggy, can you tell us about Florida Gulf Coast University? Oh, thank you, Megan. And thank you, everybody, for coming to our webinar. And thank you, Ju Judith, for the great background information, too, for everyone. Um, we're here in southwest Florida. Um, we're a fairly new university. We're um, well, I think we just turned 26. We have about a little bit over 15,000 students and we have just right now 200,000, about 200,000 physical items in our library. Since we were born 26 years ago, we are not focused on a, print, a big print collection here. And our library is in just one building too. We have um, here in our in our library, we're kind of the hub on campus. We have 30 study rooms which are booked solid all the time. Uh, we have a visual visualization wall, a media production studio and video production studio. And also we have a maker space. We have textbooks. We have a large uh, collection of textbook and course reserves. And we are currently right now running our collection analysis project to reduce our print collection since we were we're growing and we need more space. So that's really important to our students. Um, here at the library, we have two full-time staff that um, have been trained on Rapido in borrowing and lending. We have two awesome, and I mean awesome, IT support people, which have just made this transition very easy for us. And we, um, because of the way we're, we're open, we continue to uh, process our borrowing and lending requests from when we open until we close at one o'clock. Get to the next slide. I think we need to go forward, yeah. Um, not is sure. It, is there it we go. Thing yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay. Okay. Sorry so about thanks that. for introducing your campus. Great job. I know it's a lot to navigate here. Um, can you address some of the pain points that you are uh, you were having before you went to Rapido at your library? Yes, I think as Judith mentioned earlier, our users were having to log into two systems to place their request and to view their request. We didn't really have good um, tracking for the users to see either. Um, having to train our staff in multiple systems became very cumbersome and um, well, it was just very time consuming and complicated. And then our systems, they weren't talking to each other either. so. We did a lot of copy and pasting. And after seeing um, the demo with Rapido and we looked into it, it was like, why do we have two systems or three systems even? It was a little bit too expensive. So we decided that we needed to be user friendlier and more efficient. Okay. 
Why did Florida Gulf Coast University choose Rapido? Well, one of our goals has been ever since we went with Primo and Alma too, was to improve our user experience and have a faster turnaround time and also to, you know, again, save money and to have a more efficient uh, workflow for our staff and for training too. And this has made it a lot easier as well with um, how our patrons will get their material. It will come faster because it'll select from our local catalog first. Then it goes into our UBORO uh, statewide, and then it will go into Rapido, which tends to be our out-of-state libraries. So what does resource sharing look like today for your end users? Well, I'm happy to show you. It's very cool. Um, what we do, um, they have one place where they can place all their requests, or they can use our blank form that in case they don't find what they need. But it's really nice that they can begin in our in our home page and start from there. So I'm going to take you on a little journey here, what it looks like in our catalog. And this is not a live um, um, show right now because I, it just isn't. But anyway, um, so our patron starts in our home page and they type in what they're looking for. And it's very cool and it's very efficient how it continues. And so here's what they their search result brought up. And they're going to go ahead and they see that they can get it from other libraries. So the next thing they will do is they're going to just, they have the citation was really good and everything. So they're just going to click on that button where it says get it. And then next, they'll receive this little message here about copyright. We have that included when it's an article or a chapter request. And they will get the message that their request was successful, which is reassuring for our patrons to know that it really heard them. So our workflows here, I'm going to show you next what it looks like for us on our side. It's much more automated for us with Rapido. Um, we have very little triaging that we need to do because we've set up mediation rules. The cross training has been easier because it's all located in one place. Um, it's, it's just much clearer for people. So the navigation and the new system when we implemented um, did require some good IT support. Again, we had we really did have our, our two folks here were just awesome at helping us. We had to collaborate to meet our internal goals, expectations. So we all work together. We have a small team here. So it was really important that we, you know, we communicated really well. We actually ended up now we have every other week we meet just to make sure that everything's fine tuned too. So here's a screenshot. While that item is it's looking for um, the result, here's what our dashboard looks like for our staff side. And as you notice, everything is in one place here, which is really, really nice. We don't have to log into multiple systems. And this is what it would look like. Um, you can see the statuses. I think it's really nice because in the old system that we had to go over to for interlibrary loan, you know, we had some of these um, sets set up and everything. But now it's all located right here. As you can see, it's right here with borrowing and lending right here. You know, both are in the same place. We can look over here in our statuses to see where the items are coming from and when they were shipped. As you can see, I've um, we can see our mediation rules that we have in place in case a request doesn't get filled through our local our statewide system or in the Rapido. We might have to go ahead and we will triage this. Sometimes it's just something in a field and it we can recalculate it and send it back out. And here's a great example of requests that don't require um, any mediation. And you can see here where the item is coming from. You can see 
this one's this one's definitely a rapido request because it's coming from out of state. So that one and it tells you all this nice information right inside here, so it's very staff friendly. So here's our staff side for when we have a digital um, request come in. We always review and process our digital requests first. Sometimes these chapter requests come from other users are right here in our library. So we just want to make sure that if we own it, we go ahead and we fill it and scan it right here in house. And here's a little behind the scenes again where we can see now that this request that we put in, it's being calculated right now. That we just wait when we wait just a few seconds, we'll return to see where the request was sent. And as a reminder, this is happening all for all of our requests for articles and books. And we only have a few in this switch list which were not processed automatically. But when users begin in the catalog and find what they need, the back end system really follows the mediation rules and directs the user's request to be sent to the library nearest and the availability. Kind of like we shop online. We don't see all the behind scenes, but we just want our product that we're requesting. So you can see here too, this is kind of cool. I think you can see how fast everything goes as well. I think that's really helpful. So here's another example that you can see that this was going to our request went out and it and it went to our one of our in state libraries. But since right now our statewide libraries were not doing chapter and article requests with them, but at least it identified them. I'll tell you at the end because there is some good news about this one. And then next it did go out to one of our Rapido partners in Rapid ILL in Rapido with. Um, so the request is getting filled. So this this request it was sent to one of our partners because we have our pod set up and we look at we'll look at the next screen when searching for a book in, in the staff side. Too. So I think you can see kind of here too. You can see where these where the book is coming from and the articles. Oops, sorry. There we go. Go back. Rapido and Rapid ILL move along so quickly and our articles and our book requests are processed so quickly and print items sent out within a week. We I know at the beginning when we um, implemented this, we weren't sure because when you join the pod, some of our, you know, our agreements are that we will go ahead and share and we'll ship it out within seven days. And sometimes it comes even quicker than that. So here's an example of what it looks like when the we use the global index. That's another feature that we have in, in Rapido. So if a patron would come to the desk and they needed something, we could go right up here to the global index and we could put in the ISBN. You can search, you know, in multiple ways. And when we see that there's one available, we look over here. This is a really nice new feature that's included in Alma where we can see who has this title and then we can create the request for the patron if they're standing in front of us too. So that's another feature I think that's also nice because sometimes someone doesn't have access to a computer at the time and we can do it for them too on the staff side. So here's the requests being sent automatically to the nearest lender who has the addition that our patron wants. This, this is the example, it's coming from Miami which is right down here next to us. And as you can see, the back end again is very fast. It's very cool how fast this goes out and it calculates where it's going, you know, where it's going to find the match too. And in this short amount of time that I was showing you behind the scenes functions, here's the final product all in less than an hour. Next, I will show you the request, how the request appears in Primo for our user. And this is pretty cool. So it goes out again. The patron doesn't have to go to another system to log in. 
all they have to do is go to their account in Primo and all of their requests and, and uh, article and chapter requests, books, everything is in one place now for them. And they even get this nice email that tells them that their request is ready and they all need to do is click on this link in their email and that will take them to their article. So again, very user friendly. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you for sharing what the experience is like for your end users and your staff. Um, can you share what measurables speak to your experience with Rapido? So as you can see, our first six months showed us how much more efficient our processes were too. The article turnaround time is just so fast. It's less than 21 hours. Our turnaround time for physical um, was definitely faster too. Our borrowing volume actually increased by 33% and our lending volume also increased. Um, estimates around staff time spent per request, we estimate less than a few minutes on each request. And so, what was, well, yeah, go mm -hmm. ahead. What was it like to implement Rapido? Well, I think because we have such a really good team here and everything, it was really important to us to, you know, we, we began um, meeting up in December of 2022. Um, we, our goal was to go live in spring 2023, and we had the process included doing homework assignments, familiarization with the system and the workflow set up, and, and, and we had a dedicated blog for our group questions. So we had weekly meetings. We set up those weekly meetings with Ex Libris with Leish, who's awesome. And then in our weekly meetings, we had to track um, to reach our go live goal, we we tracked everything, made sure we did our homework assignments because that was really important. You know, things would come up you would think of and, and we would post it on our blog. We had tools to help support our weekly training uh, meetings would be the blog and the timeline we began meeting was, like I said, in December and we were able to go live in the spring and we were really excited about that. So the adjustments, um, the integrations were because it's a cloud app, which is again, super nice um, because the cloud app, app is so much better and more available for adjustments. When our IT support team needed to access the system, they could just go to the cloud and the implementation and the ability to review settings was much more intuitive than the search tool too. And I just wanna say, because you know, in our environment now, people are working remotely. So in this system, it's so much easier to have everything on a cloud like it is. Question for you, Peggy. What are your plans for resource sharing in 2024? Well, this is I'm glad you asked that question because it is giving us the opportunity to do our user survey because now that we have such a robust system, we probably could Get, we need to get input from our users. Um, something that's very positive about this, remember the earlier slide where I showed you one of our uh, statewide libraries had an article available. Well, we will be implementing um, borrowing and lending within our state of Florida now with chapter and article requests, which that'll even be more efficient as well. That's gonna be really cool. And we're coming up on celebrating our one year um, mark having Rapido. And we are looking forward to sunsetting the very last part of the other system that we um, still have we're using because our contract's not up till the end of June. Okay, thank you, Peggy, for speaking to your experience today. And on the note of plans for 2024, for those in attendance today, could you weigh in on the poll in regards to upcoming priorities that you see for resource sharing? Um, maybe you're looking to simplify your user borrowing journey simplify the staff experience, automate more requests, connect with global collections, or um, other. if you have other priorities, can you comment those in the chat? Okay, thank you for weighing in on that poll. I've got one more poll for you here today. 
um, thinking about uh, what's next. So to everyone who attended the session today, if you have further interest in this topic, please use the, the next poll to um, register for demos for Rapido for your libraries. And um, you'll see the options to register for Rapido as an Alma user or register for a Rapido demo as a Sierra user. And as you're um, working on those um, registrations, I'm going to move into looking at some of their various questions you've shared with us today. Um, we've got quite a bit of time today to address some additional questions. So please uh, take a moment to look at uh, the, the poll in the chat for registering for the demos. And I'm going to move to seeing what questions that we've got to share with our, our presenters today. So I see a, uh, one of these questions. I'm going to start with a question for you, Peggy. Um, folks asked, you referred to using two systems previously um, as uh, you know one of the kind of motivators to move to Rapido to get things into one system. Um, which, they're asking which two systems were you using? Um, we were using Iliad and um, WorldShare. We uh, our contract with Iliad expired, so then we're just using WorldShare until that contract expires. And something that was really cool about it is that you can map when the request isn't filled, let's say it isn't filled by your local state or Rapido, the request automatically will, you use your mediation rule and it will move out automatically into WorldShare with all the citation information. But as yeah. we add peer to peer, that's the one thing I forgot to mention, um, as more and more um, libraries join Rapido and and libraries that aren't in Rapido yet, we we also are increasing our peer to peer borrowing and lending as well. Thank you, Peggy. Another question that the folks have for you um, is: Working with your Rapido partners, do these libraries charge ILL fees? And if so, how is this handled? No, there are no ILL fees. That that was um, the cost was very appealing. No, we do not have that. Yeah. Um, your library is working in reciprocal pods, is my understanding. Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah, we're in reciprocal pods. It's very um, similar to Rapid ILL, so it's the same except print. Um, somebody else asked, um, do you have more staff using Rapido than you had using the previous tools? That was one of the reasons why we needed a system that was um, more efficient because we don't have an increase in staff. We we actually had a reduction in our staff and we hope after this first year to um, train some of our students that are here in the evening to do it because we think that they can they can handle it too. Thank you. I'm going to shoot a question over to Judith now. Um, there's a question here. Does this work for physical books as well? How could a 24 hour promise be fulfilled in that case? Um, uh, is, or is there, um, yeah, how does it, how, I, I, understanding this question is how does this work for physical books and that 24 hour kind of promise? Okay, great. Uh, yeah, we, we kind of rushed through the system. So uh, maybe you didn't uh, note uh, the, the tile. So for, um, for book chapters and digital requests, we um, our commitment is 20, 24 hours. Um, and actually, uh, it is manageable. Our average is less than 10 hours. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, the system does load balancing. And uh, we will find the lender, not only the lender that has it automatically, but we'll find also the lender that is in the right time zone. And as Peggy also mentioned, there's no work from the borrowing side. So actually a, a, a library that might be open at the time that it receives it uh, will be able to fulfill that request very much, very quickly. Now, if we move to the to the physical side of things, and I don't know if you recall that slide that I showed where the word uh, options for the user, what we have in Rapido is something called pods, uh, which are used um, as uh, for physical uh, materials, and they are kind of uh, they, they're decided by the community. We can create any pod that uh, is needed. 
uh, they're regional pods, and sometimes we have small consortial or according to the consortia, a consortial pod, and then a regional pod, and then a bigger pod, and then we have the US pod, and uh, there's a, a bunch of uh, pods that are there. The the um, Of course, we don't have a 24 hours um, um, delivery uh, time for, for physical. So it depends of, of what type of pod it is. So for example, if I recall correctly, the and Megan, maybe you can correct me, the US pod is seven days. I don't I don't uh, remember, but we have pods in California in the California area that are uh, less. Uh, so it depends regionally uh, where you are, and this is what you display to your users. I do want to make use of this opportunity to say that those styles and the information that you're providing to your users is something you can customize. And if you have any type of fear, because it always can happen that one, you know, something broke on the way and the book didn't arrive in seven days. And you can put average, you can add any type of system, any type of wording around that. But most of our users, our institutions are being able to uh, commit to those uh, terms and they are decided by the community. And if there's a change for any reason, because uh, the courier is working differently, uh, the post is uh, delayed lately, we can always change this uh, term. So, so just know that there are a variety of terms, not only the 24 hours. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. And I'm going to kick this next question to, to Peggy. Uh, does Rapido keep track of copyright? What, do, uh, what does your copyright workflow look like? Um, yes, it does keep track of it. We implement it. I can only tell you that I know that our, I, our IT folks set that up, so I didn't do the back end part. But yes, it does take care of that for us. Good question. Yeah, thank you. Um, so Judith, here's one for you. Um, currently, Ohio Link chapter scans go through ILL, not Ohio Link. If we are using Rapido for Ohio Link after the switch, will ILL staff need to work on chapter requests in that system instead of via ILL? Okay, so uh, Rapido has, thank you. Rapido has uh, a couple of flavors. Um, and of course, you can do uh, everything to Rapido in terms of your own digitization request. Um, so um, if you're a, a consortia or you're a single institution, in both cases, you can decide that your digitizations are going through the ILL workflows and uh, deal with them in that way. So we have single institutions where they're using that tile, the Rapido tile, to request uh, their digitization. It goes through the ILL staff. And uh, you also have um, uh, you, you in, in the consortia is even more common that this is what what is being used. Uh, so so the answer is yes. And then Peggy, there's a question about what's the volume of your borrowing and lending requests? I saw the question and I was just going to tell you right now, I know we have uh, pro we have about 443 uh, items in our act in our active request in borrowing and lending, those seem right now we only have 96 items in there because we are mainly um, we're more digital than we are print heavy. So a lot of our lending is going through rapid for articles and chapters from our e-resources mainly because we were born more digital than we were print. I mean, the funny story I heard when I first got here was they actually had to buy books from a library that was closing so that we could put books in our library so that people realize that we, we do have books. But as time goes on and when with especially with our type of university being a very we're very strong in the health sciences because of our demographic and everything, we do more in um, e-resources and we do borrow a lot, but right now our active requests are 443 as of today. Thank you, Peggy. Yes. Um, so Judith, maybe you can start with this question and then Peggy, if, you, if there are any holes, maybe you can jump in and add uh, into it. So how, how would you deal with requests that you cannot fill within Rapido? Okay. Um, 
Great question. Uh, so first of all, a, a little story. Our uh, uh, Two years ago, our first customer in Australia went live. It was the first Rapido customer. I was so happy. And I sent an email to everyone. Hey, we have a first live Rapido customer. And the question I had is, how can you have one live customer in an ILL system? And, and this is a in in a nutshell, the answer is that, of course, we uh, integrate uh, with other systems. Peggy did mention the peer to peer. Of course, we integrate with Alma. Of course, we integrate um, uh, in, in many, many, many formats. ISO, we support ISO and we integrate with other systems. We have uh, institutions doing peer to peer with Iliad. Uh, we have um, other ways of finding materials like integrations with uh, the CCC, the, the Copyright Clearance Center. We have integrations with Reprints Desk. Um, Linda Hall is part of our community um, and uh, many, many other options. One of us being the product manager of Rapido, one of our biggest uh, items is sustaining your networks and making it possible for you to communicate with anyone in Rapido, outside of Rapido. Peggy, maybe you want to add a little yeah. bit on this. And our strategy right now, I think that's a really good question as we um, sunset world share. As requests um, go, as far as the print side, when the print requests go into world share, we are looking at that library that fills it if they're in our um, in almost so that we can do peer to peer with them. So as we go, we're going to be building that peer to peer relationship as well. Um, for articles, because we're in World Share right now, we're using that, but we will be using uh, Get It Now and uh, Article Galaxy as well. Oops, I can't hear. No, that's my fault. I've got to unmute myself. <laughs> uh, Judith, uh, for any non-reciprocal pods, uh, the example they give is maybe international partners. Does Rapido consider a process cost in any way? Yes, uh, we don't love the costs, but we understand uh, that uh, there are times where uh, there might be a need for cost. We have a very good example of um, a national-wide uh, community uh, in Europe that actually has uh, costs involved and there um, this are it depends how you want to do it but these are costs to the patrons themselves and they're shown as part of the information that is displayed for the user this is one way to do it so that's uh, on top of the pod and um, we also have uh, functionality uh, that um, enables just shipping costs between libraries to exist. We've seen a great, great uh, response from the community not wanting to have this cost implied, but we do understand that they might happen. We are even releasing in our uh, March release, Megan, I hope I'm right, uh, uh, invoice functionality. So uh, if you're interested in watching our, our webinars or following our release notes, you can do that. That's open. It's totally open and we'll be releasing an invoicing uh, functionality from lender to send a nice, very nice letter. Uh, everything automatically if you want to have it automatically. And 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 that's the way we handle cost. There are fields for cost, any type of copyright fees. Um, fees, there's uh, a whole world of costs uh, that you can implement if you need to implement them. And only one one correction there is it is the April release April release. Uh, just if Thank anybody you. comes to the <laughs> webinar next week that's talking about the monthly updates, it won't be in uh, uh, the March release update for, for next next week. Um, one question that is, I think, a really good one here. Um, I know you you touched on this, Peggy, but maybe we need to slow down and, and uh, help build clarity here. Is can you um, talk about how the patrons order order articles? They're not book focused. They're also a digital focused institution, ordering six thousand articles a year. What does that look like for your end users to place article requests? Um, when they do their search in Primo, they'll prompt them. They'll find the article. Um, and the way we have our discovery set up, it will um, prompt them to go ahead and place that request. Even if we don't own it locally or you borrow or our statewide system, if it's in the in the rapid 
system, it will pop up and they can go ahead and click that little box. It says get it now and and that's where they would do it. So on the staff side, hopefully your citations or your catalog is really good and has great citations because it will populate those fields and it will automatically be sent out to a library that has that article. Thank you. Hopefully that uh, get, yeah. dove into that question for that person. Um, similar uh, on that kind of line of thought, articles, Judith, if they use DocLine, does Rapido incorporate those requests or do they have to be tracked separately? Great. Wow, what a timely question. Um, so we all know DocLine is great. Um, and actually what I want to update now is that we're working with DocLine for an integration. Uh, so that's um, something that we're coordinating with uh, DocLine. DocLine has opened it up in their way, so they're creating their own uh, APIs. You should be so be a, you'll soon be able to push a request to DocLine, but I still have to say that this is on. Um, we're working together with DocLine, but DocLine is kind of uh, moving the um, the pace here. But uh, we we we're super excited that uh, this door is is being open. So stay tuned. And then uh, another question for you, Peggy. Um, well, is Rapid ILL a part of, of your Rapido experience and consist system configuration? There's a library currently using Clio and they've had good success with it. Once they migrate to to Rapido, can they drop Clio? Uh, that's a, a big opinion piece, I guess. But, oh, I, um, I don't know that. I just yeah. think um, Rapid, we were already Rapid ILL users, so it was, it was really nice to have everything in one place because our Rapid ILL is in our AMA and so is Rapido. I'm just trying to think back now. It seems like I can't even remember. We had to log into the Rapid ILL website. That was what we did before it was integrated into our AMA. I was like, how did we do this before? Now I'm, I'm forgetting, but I don't know about the other one. That's fair, thank you. And I see a question here about how often our releases. I'll just acknowledge that there's monthly releases at this time. And that you do webinars, so anyone yes, who Yes, and we do, uh, there's monthly documentation and monthly webinars. If you want to join us for those webinars, um, be happy to have you there. Um, Judith, what effect will Rapido Lending have on their career-based delivery system? Hey, so, um, I'll answer this uh, in this way. Um, if you have a courier system, and we're talking about a, a, a closed Rapido uh, consortia, for example, uh, what would suggest to you is to create a pod for that courier with the terms of the courier, and uh, this would be your first priority. So I don't remember if I mentioned this, but you can join many, many, many pods, as many as you want, but you need to order them by priority. So if we take an example of a consortia in the United States, most probably your and your career there, most probably this will be your first spot priority for physical items. And then uh, a closer region to you, uh, I mentioned the West Post pod, for example, that we have, if, if you're in the West, this would be a next uh, uh, priority. And then the US wider and then we have a North American one that includes our North, our Canadian friends, and then we have the international pod that for now it's still uh, non cost and we do have some members there. So um, the system knows how to organize this uh, in, in that way. So basically just to make it very, very simple is that uh, we will work with you while you're implementing and we'll see what your career is, how does it look, what are the partners, and this, and, and we will simply, um, according to those uh, services that the career is performing for you, this is the information we can show your users if you if you want to show this information. There are two questions that I'm going to kind of lump together, similar topic. Um, uh, does Rapido work for Sierra and Rapido work for Folio? Sorry to summarize those questions, trying to make sure we have time to get to these last few questions in here. Um, Judith, can you speak to that? Yes, uh, so we've done a lot of work uh, in the past uh, year to make this happen, and we do have um, integrations uh, for Sierra 
and portfolio and whoever's interested in um, joining us. We have uh, development programs, uh, development partner programs for this. We're super excited to see the community uh, sense. And yes, we integrate. Uh, so the, the answer is yes. Thank you. And then um, I think one more here for you, Peggy, that I think is uh, most appropriate. Can you provide clarification of how uh, how you use world share in your ILL process um, next to Rapido? I think you've made it clear that you're, you might, might be moving away from that. But how have you yeah. used it? Yeah, well, far? we have. That's our, that's our last resort to, to get what the patron requested. And we're using it as a tool kind of right now to see where those requests are coming from so that we can see if they're a ex libris library you know using alma because then we can we can contact them to see if they would like to do peer-to-peer -peer. like in the um suny libraries in new york we've been doing peer-to-peer -peer with them because there are quite a few in that group um that that has worked out really well for us too. So as we go along, because when we our contract does expire in June, we, we do want to make sure we're getting what our patrons need. But we're finding fewer and fewer of our requests going into WorldShare as the last resort. Um, we're Because we have the contract, we're using them right now um, rather than automatically going to Article Galaxy or, or get it now. Does that help? I hope so. I think so. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll see what our uh, our folks in attendance say to us. Okay. Here's another question. Uh, you said you wanted book ordering to be similar to ordering a pizza. Uh, you know, a simple process there. But they have to do their searches first in Primo. Is uh, Rapido the staff view of their requests they are making on Primo, or do they have to go to Rapido to make a request because it is requiring them to go to separate places? First, a discovery service lets you make the request from the same place. They just want to make sure they understand what that process looks like. It's one stop shopping. They do it in Primo, and then the back end, which I cannot tell you all those details, but our IT people could. They're awesome. But um, the back end does all the work. It decides, do you have it locally? Do you have it statewide? Or is it does it need to be pushed out to our rapid rapid o libraries or rapid ILL? Thank you, Peggy. Okay, here's a, a big one, Peggy. Um, what would be the incentive of isolating resources to only those to a relatively small new collection instead of the WorldCat OCLC World Share? So I think the perspective is or assumption is maybe that with Rapido, it's isolating the resources to a small new collection. Um, okay, I think I can answer. So let's say it if you've exhausted everything in Primo, we have the form that people, if you haven't found what you needed, then you can click on the form. I think, Judith, you, you showed the form at the beginning. That form will pop up and our patrons can put in um, all the information they have. And if we need to, um, we will go ahead and one of our librarians, if, if it's an item that is for one of our faculty or grad students that's really needed, we'll go ahead and purchase it too. You've got your your rapid ILL partners, your your established network, and then you've you've got uh, purchase options as a part of your workflow decisions as well. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Maybe I'll jump in also, Megan, if we, if we have time on this one. Um, this is a very uh, uh, we have an hour, right? So it's a short uh, time, but there's lots of things that you can do when uh, when a resource is not found, right? So, for example, there's functionality called find a partner. Um, so you have a, 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 a boring request, request that for some reason didn't find a partner. You can always click and see from all of our very big community. And I, it, I did mention um, I did have the slide, but didn't mention the number. Uh, just our basic community without going out um, includes, of course, 
much more includes the ALMA users, the ALMA institutions, not only the Rapido institutions. And uh, you can find throughout that functionality if someone else has it, even though you haven't established yet a connection with them and decide to establish a new connection. This is a, a good example of something you can do. Um, I think that the best answer to this question is the fulfillment rates, okay? And uh, as you can see, there's been a growth in the number of requests that are being placed to uh, our institutions with no need to increase staff, but also fulfillment rates are, are very high in general. And it doesn't matter how they're fulfilled. It means either through our rapido pods, it could be through an integration, are the users are um, what we hear from our institutions from Peggy and from other institutions is that uh, actually we as libraries are being able to fulfill the requests from our users, sometimes even with the increase of uh, having more um, boring requests because it's easier to to ask for them and and to fulfill them. I don't know if you feel the same way, Peggy. I, I feel that we. I was noticing someone else's question in there. I, I do think everybody, because it's a change, it's people are apprehensive, but I think very quickly our our um, apprehension was, it, it, it showed differently. Our requests were getting filled so quickly and being integrated with rapid ILL being integrated as well. It, it really, it's, kind of surprises but not really it was just a it was a new adventure is what it was and i think for our size library and our needs at our university um it's it's been great it's been really good and um we have a couple other universities colleges in the state of florida going into rapido now and that's going to be even better um as well but i feel um Tina, also, you asked another question. I think I back up there about your medical library, I think. Um, we only submit our, our items in our holdings that we have copyright, you know, that we have permissions and licensing to actually lend as well. So it is a robust system and it does require, um, you know, you just only want to submit your holdings that you're willing to, to lend. Okay, thank you so much um, for working through these questions, Peggy and Judith, um, and for your time presenting today too. Um, I understand we might not have gotten through all of your questions. I do wanna take a moment here. Um, my colleague Letty put the, the links into the chat again for registering to the demos. Those would be um, great places um, to continue to get more information, to have more of this Q&A and uh, to continue um, engaging with this topic. So thank you all for your time today. And thank you so much, Peggy, for sharing your story with us. Uh, well, thank you. I really enjoy it and it's great. Thank you, Peggy. Thank, thank you. you.